Armager Warglaives. Nimble and responsive. Armager Warglaives lope towards the enemy with purposeful strides. On one arm, they wield fearsome Reaper chain cleavers, their adamantium teeth whirring, their actuator motors roaring. On the other arm, they bear menacing thermal spears, bulky melter weapons that are essentially stripped down equivalents of the Knight Errant's thermal cannon. A single shot from such a weapon can vaporize even the most heavily protected combatant, melt through the wall of a bunker, or reduce a battle tank to a molten wreck. Atop their carapace, each warglaive also carries a heavy stubber for reaping infantry, or else a melter gun that augments their already fearsome anti-armor capabilities. Though they are the lightest class of Imperial Knight that's regularly deployed to the battlefields of the 41st millennium, each armager is still an imposing war engine capable of butchering entire squads. They possess exceptional speed, able to outpace most battle tanks and transport vehicles when moving at a flat out run, and react almost as quickly as a flesh and blood warrior. Moreover, to compensate for their comparatively smaller size, armager class knights typically hunt in packs of two or three. In the case of warglaives, this involves rapidly outflanking and encircling their quarry like wolves on the prowl, before closing in on a rune transmitted signal to trap and slaughter the enemy. Unusually for knights, armagers are not fitted with a full throne mechanicum. Instead, they are controlled using a more compact device known as a helm mechanicum, placed upon the head and connected via prefrontal sockets to the pilot cerebrum. These machines do not require a full becoming ritual in order for neural interfacing to be successful. For this reason, the prestige of piloting an armager is significantly less than that attached to sitting a fully fledged throne mechanicum. This is compounded by the fact that while armagers can operate independently, it is traditional for their helm's mechanicum to be neurally slaved to the command impulses of a larger knight, rendering them subordinate. To accept such mental serfdom is to possess the rank of bondsman, and while this is certainly no mark of dishonour, it is far from glorious. It is for these reasons that the piloting of armagers falls to those from the lower social strata of the noble houses. Some give this duty to distant relatives and minor offshoots of more established bloodlines, or the surviving knights of a house that has fallen upon hard times. Others elevate the finest common-born warriors from amongst their household guard or planetary militia forces, raising their family's standing from mere peasantry to valued and respected meritocracy. Still other noble houses maintain specialist suborders of favoured retainers who are fated from birth to be armager pilots. Such is the case with House Griffith's Order of the Hound, who are inculculated with notions of faithful service and honourable submission to a noble's will. These warriors are expert armager pilots who favour the close quarters aggression of the warglaive and who stride into battle alongside their masters filled with dogged determination to do their betters proud. <laughs>